Hey, what's up studs? And today we had a bunch of LEGO 2024 set pictures come out and I was excited about them enough to want to sit down and talk about the Speed Champions, the Harry Potter, and maybe shockingly, LEGO Technic has kind of got something going this year that I think is really, really good. Now, since I did recently review the Avengers Tower, we'll start with the LEGO Marvel for January of 2024 and it's probably more disappointing than Lego Star Wars in January of 2024 because it's literally all four plus sets. We got the drill spinner vehicle for what is 10 euros. We're going to assume $10. This is on JB Spiel Warren's website. So if you want to pre-order any of these from them, go ahead and do so with the link in the description. But we have Spidey versus Green Goblin. Looks like three figures for 20 bucks. Again, that's in euros. I don't know if these are gonna be $27 US. And finally, we have the monstrosity that is the Team Spidey Web Spinner Headquarters. This thing looks frankly ridiculous to me, but it's obviously a four plus set. So like they've gone really outside of the box with this one and done some crazy stuff not sets that I'm interested in, but again, it's Marvel stuff, so I think there are enough people interested in it to go ahead and show it. The Spider-Man set wasn't on their website, so I totally forgot about it, but it's obviously the best Marvel set of 2024 so far. It's 70 bucks, and it looks spectacular. It's super smooth, very low studs, and the prints on this thing look perfect to me. Very happy with this one, and I've seen a lot of hype around it, so definitely one you may be interested in picking up, but moving on. Now, next up, of Speed Champions, this is the one that I will probably buy. We have the Mustang Dark Horse Sports car i drive a 2020 mustang don't ask me how many cylinders it has you don't want to know the answer but this one looks really cool and i'd love to switch it out to a dark gray color to kind of match the car that i own i think that would be really cool to do i don't know if all the pieces exist or not to do that i would assume they do dark gray is like a really common thing next up we have this cool looking audi i don't really care too much for it it's not a car that i have any real connection to but i do like the box art where it's in the snow i think that's pretty neat and again 27 bucks for that one finally this is going to be a 50 dollar two pack with two nice racing vehicles that you can have race against each other or throw on display next to each other and they will match so i quite like that one now the next thing we're going to look at is harry potter and harry potter is a theme that i thought lego should take basically five or ten more years off again do another big gap before they give it another go and you can kind of ride the harry potter wave again with the new generation in five or ten years whatever however i think that this year's harry potter sets have breathe new life into the theme. Part of the reason I thought they should stop doing Harry Potter is with the like first half year waves every year, they were scraping the bottom of the barrel for set ideas. They were doing these books and these banners that I had no interest in. They were just bad sets for like any collector. I, I think most people didn't like them. And clearly they got the message because they're not making them anymore. And they have gone all out. I mean, this reminds me of like a Lego Star Wars January wave of years past. So first up, we have the $15 Flying Ford. And this is a build that historically Lego had only ever put in other bigger sets. So you had to buy like an $80 Hogwarts train or Whomping Willow to be able to get the Ford. But now you can get it on its own for $15. And I think that's great. You get Han. On. You get a nice Ron and Harry Potter as your main figures. And again, $15 is just great. If this was Star Wars, it'd be 20 or 27. Like, I can't believe how cheap this is. It's a really good deal. And on top of that, again, they already have the existing train set and the Whopping Willow set on their own. So you can buy those separately and add them in with your Ford if you want to. Like, I think that's a great way to do it. And I think they have uh, really struck gold here with this flying Ford set. Now, next up, kind of standing on its own as a weird scale set, it's just really a display set at a really cheap price, is the Hedwig at Four Privet Drive for only $20. You're getting the little Four Privet Drive sign. You've got Hedwig. And then instead of just making the set $10 so that they could sell for $20, they included this like magical trunk with a wand and a picture of Harry's parents holding him. Like, that's cool stuff, I think. It looks like maybe a print brick no that's gonna be a sticker there for sure that's definitely gonna be a sticker on that brick but overall it looks like a pretty cool little set for twenty dollars i mean I, like right now two sets we're two for two on harry potter with just bangers like really cheap bangers next up the retail on this is 38 euros and it's the hogwarts castle boathouse this is another one like we have a $40 set essentially with five figures. That's amazing, just in its own right. Uh, but the boathouse looks really nice. Maybe a little small for $40, but still you got the two little boats with the characters rowing themselves in. I can't zoom in more, I guess, but then Professor McGonagall uh, standing at the steps of the boathouse. Like that's a really neat little build. I love the little water accents at the bottom of it. Like this is just something that's way better than they were doing in the last couple years for these smaller Harry Potter sets. Like what a turnaround for Harry Harry Potter so far, three for three in my eyes. I mean, I'm gonna have to buy all of these. Next, we have a 
$50 castle owl read. Just a different section you can add to your castle. I, I think all of these are unique figures, but I haven't followed Harry Potter close enough recently to know. I'm sure you at least get a unique owl or two. It looks like just counting at least six owls, and then you're getting one of the collectible portraits, which I don't care about, so I'm not going to talk about. I do, by the way, really like the snow caps on these. That's a really nice idea to add a little bit of spice to these Hogwarts castle builds, which otherwise color you know, can be a little bit bland on with just gray and tan. So definitely adding in a little bit of snow, I think really spices it up. This one says 896 pieces for $75. You know, I was just doing the eye test and I thought $75 was too much money, but Hogwarts hut and unexpected visit might just be worth the money. Looks like a really good build upgrade to some of the previous ones. I mean, some of the previous ones were already really good, but this thing just knocks it out of the park. It looks like they actually have the little dragon hatching as part of the set. That's really neat. Hagrid's recliner actually works. That is like amazing um looks like you get draco along with your main cast and crew and hagrid so like really good set nice little uh, outhouse i think for fluffy or is that a different dog i can't remember i think this is just killer build this is definitely going to be a pickup for me and then finally for the harry potter sets of the first half of 2024 it looks like we have the magical creatures forbidden forest set and this is way better than the last forbidden forest set it was a little 20 dollars set this one's a 30 dollars set so a little bit more to, to work off of i guess um but you only have ron and hermione so maybe a little bit low on the figures for some people but still i think for the scene it's probably appropriate um you have buckbeak and then i'm not sure what all the other like character and things names are i just haven't followed harry potter close enough recently but i still think aesthetically this is a really cool set and that i think is what really matters with these harry potter sets all six of them are just aesthetically pleasing they're not boring they have fun things about them and you know there were really good harry potter sets last year I'm, I'm not saying that every set has been bad for harry potter but i think getting away from the the books and the banners for harry potter here just makes it feel so much better you know just feels so much better to look at so that's the harry potter stuff now next up we have technic a couple of these i really don't care about i mean like they're good sets i'm sure but i'm not buying these i just have never bought these sorts of things don't really have an interest in them but we have a mclaren you know, for people in the F1 or whatever, there's a McLaren. You have a nice motorcycle. Kind of looks like the last one they released. I don't know enough about motorcycles to, again, care about it. But the ones that I do find really cool here, uh, we have a couple of space and then kind of space military ones. The surface space loader kind of looks like it's on the surface of Mars, obviously. Um, they're using kind of the classic space logo on the top right here. Again, can't zoom in as much as I want, but you get the point. It looks like it has some really great play functionality to it where you can kind of uh, squish the model in is maybe the best way to say it. And then obviously it looks like it's gonna be able to load and offload the little crate that's included that kind of reminds me of the 2002 Django Fett Slave 1 crate. Just a weird little reference there. And I'm sure that wasn't the intention but that's what I like think of when I see it. This next one, $80, 526 pieces. Okay, so this one I do think is overpriced. I was wondering what the price on this was. I hadn't you know, known the price before filming this, but the planet Earth and moon in orbit is still a really dope set. I'm buying this day one, but as far as like, you know, should you buy it for full price? Probably not, wait for a sale. This thing is really cool looking though. And I think some people are gonna wanna motorize this and that's gonna be a really simple thing to do, just sticking a motor onto the end of it. And then you're gonna be able to have the Earth orbit the sun and then the moon orbits the earth like it's really really sick that they built this now it's not in scale i guess maybe the earth should be a lot a lot further or a lot smaller uh, compared to the sun but i think it's still a really cool like idea for lego to make something like this and i'd be really curious to see people add in more planets potentially or something like that but yeah having the printed earth globe in there is just oh it's so cool what a what a set like this is this is the I think this is like, I have a couple more space sets here with the Mars Crew Exploration Rover. This one's just neat, just a, a cool build, $150, very expensive for a first half year set. Usually they don't go that high, but this one looks like it's worth it. And again, it's kind of outside the box for what Technic has been doing recently, where I feel like they do a lot of like modern, realistic uh, vehicles and things. And so to see something as crazy as this, I think is really fun. It's kind of a uh, Mars mission vibes to me, kind of 2007 Mars mission, a lot of 2007 vibes uh, with some of the sets this year including the lego star wars battle pack that's supposed to be coming out which isn't revealed yet we should uh, have that revealed probably in the next week or so so keep your eyes peeled on the channel for that but the final set we're looking at today is the heavy cargo spaceship sorry the vtol heavy cargo spaceship and i find that interesting there's a couple interesting things here right vtol is a kill streak in call of duty so first off can't believe they would call it a vtol because like that's definitely a military thing right like just th the word of it it just is so i find that interesting given they canceled the osprey a couple years ago a few years ago and 
It also looks like an Osprey. This is a space version of the Osprey. And I want to imagine that part of the reason this exists is because they did cancel the Osprey and the designers were like, well, we could make a space one. And that's what they did. I, I would just imagine that's probably how this set came about. I mean, not 100,000% for sure, but just a guess. Looks like it has that little Technic loading function again. I'm really keen to see what this little thing basically means. Looks very cool with the landing gear here. Like that's just amazing looking. And you know, you can see a kid playing with it and all. But yeah, uh, I just really cool looking set. Like I think this would be an interesting one to buy solely so that I could compare it to my Lego Osprey set, which I still have not built and reviewed. It's been uh, way too long, but this thing is uh, super sick. How much money is this? $100? Wow, $100, 1365 pieces. Wow, a lot cheaper than I expected. So this might be a pickup for me too, so I can compare it to the Osprey. But those are the 2024 Lego sets that we had revealed in the last 24 hours or so. Again, next week, we should see the two Lego Star Wars January 2024 sets. It's kind of unfortunate that it's only two. We saw how great the Harry Potter wave was, but the Star Wars stuff will be split up between January, March, and May. So we'll have more stuff later in the uh, spring season. So let me know what you think about these sets in the comment section below. Subscribe if you want to check out any reviews I end up doing of these, and I'll see you in the next one.